everyone, and welcome to another episode of You Are Buzzworthy. Today, I have the pleasure of talking with Ruben Schwartz, the founder of Memorian, a fun anti-CRM platform designed for independent consultants who love serving clients but hate selling. He's also the host and chief nerd of the Sales for Nerds podcast. And today, we are going to be discussing the importance of CRMs how to overcome the, the reluctancy we have with using CRMs and how consultants and service providers can leverage more revenue through them without becoming a full-time sales executive in their own business. Ruben, welcome to the show. Michael, thanks so much for having me. It's great to be here. Was that enough energy for you? Are you hyped now? <laughs> I'm totally pumped to be here. <laughs> All right. So let's dive right in, get to the nitty gritty here and start with what is CRM and why is it important for consultants and service providers? CRM is a product category that stands for customer relationship management, which is just one of those silly buzzwords that doesn't actually mean anything much anymore, but basically means let's keep track of our clients and prospects and partners and other people in our world so that we're not trying to keep it all straight in our head. And this got popular in the 90s, a company called Siebel Systems, if you're old enough to remember them. And now the sort of the 800 pound gorilla is Salesforce. You may have heard of HubSpot, other tools like that. These are all CRM tools, and they're usually designed for the VP of sales to keep track of their sales team's activities. So as an independent consultant, you probably don't have a sales team, and you may not really want to use a tool that's designed for tracking a sales team. I know that I struggle with these things for years, but it's also a big struggle trying to keep them straight in your head or in your spreadsheet or whatever. So whether you have a fancy tool, or you've got sticky notes, or you've got a spreadsheet, or some combination of the above, you're doing CRM, whether you like it or not, whether you have a tool that you subscribe to for that, you're already doing it. The question is, are you doing it well in a way that works for you and leads to joy and clients, or does it lead to a, a bunch of stress, uh, stress and missed opportunities? Well, I know that... <laughs> I hate my CRM and it's just because I don't have it automated, right? Like I've, I've played with a bunch of them and I know that that's got to be one of the frustrations. Why else do you think service providers and consultants hate CRMs and what impact does it have, uh, do, does it have for them to avoid using them in their business? Okay. There's a lot to unpack there. So hopefully okay. I'll, I'll hit on all the key points. So I think there's two things why we hate CRMs because I know I spent decades hating them. One is the tools are built for somebody else, right? They're built for the VP of sales to run their sales team. They are not built for somebody who is spending most of their time serving clients and needs to do the sales and marketing and all that other stuff in their spare time. So, so there's just sort of a mismatch there. It always feels a little weird. And then secondly, at least for me, and from what I understand, this is not an uncommon problem. A lot of us folks in the professional services world, we are people who want to serve. And then we feel like we have to switch into sales mode or marketing mode to do that stuff. And that feels very, very uncomfortable. Plus we're doing it in a tool that isn't really built for us. And at least for me, I kept spiraling into just like, oh my gosh, I like, I know I should be able to do this. I was a freaking sales and marketing consultant for crying out loud. <laughs> I, I was trying to teach companies to do this stuff really well. And I couldn't do it myself because I was struggling with tools that didn't fit me. And I was trying to be somebody that I wasn't. That makes sense. So, so, so if I'm hearing you right, by avoiding using a CRM, we are wasting time because we're trying to use spreadsheets. And I've done that in my past where we like, oh, I've got a Google sheet. I'll just do that. I mean, I don't talk to that many people. And then yep. you start like actually writing them down. And you're like, oh, shoot, I talk to a lot of people. This is where I heard. And then the second is you're going to let things, uh, let prospects fall through the cracks because there's no automation in there, in a spreadsheet. There's no automation in your notebook. There's no automation in the stack of cards. Oh my gosh, I have it. The stack of cards. You guys right. are not seeing it on video, but I'm holding up a stack of at least three inches of cards here that have been sitting here for probably 12 months. And some of them have made it into the CRM that I finally adopted this year. And some of them have it, right? And so I'm hearing wasted time, lost revenue, opportunity costs. Is there anything else I'm missing? 
Well, I think there's a couple other things. One is you're just mentally a little bit scattered because you know that you're not keeping track of everything. And then that stress permeates into the areas where you're used to being in control. In other words, when you're actually serving clients, you always have these open loops kind of spinning in your head, which are distracting you when they shouldn't, instead of knowing that you've got it under control. And then I think aside from uh, missing out on opportunities and clients and things like that, you're limiting the impact that you're having in the universe because you're not doing the things that you would probably tell your clients to do to get organized and do things the right way so that they can maximize their leverage and be in their zone of genius, et cetera. Instead, at least for me, I would sort of treat this as, oh, sales and marketing is this necessary, evil, dirty thing that I have to go do here and there, but I'm going to kind of steer clear of it as much as I can instead of let me make that all part of my mission of service so that I don't have to switch between service mode and sales mode. I can just be me in service mode the whole time and be much more effective at getting clients. I love it. Yes, I totally get that. I mean, once you get automation, once you are able to put tasks and reminders, it, it lifts this weight of all the things we try to remember when it comes to the sales side of our head versus the ops side of our head or serving our clients, right? And, you know, we're talking about consultants here. I mean, because that's who you usually work with, they're independent and solo consultants. But as a service provider, I, I'm in marketing and I am a sales team of one. I have an ops team of a dozen, mm -hmm. but there's only one salesperson. Right. And if I have if I can have all of the not my sales knowledge just at the, my fingertips, and then the tasks that are uh, needing to happen, the follow-up, right? Because you know one of the things we're, we're not going to dive into it today is sales, but we know that sales come from follow-up. And when most people stop following up, the next call is usually the one that actually makes a difference, right? They talk about like most salespeople will stop at three calls when it really takes eight. Right. right. And that persistence is there. Well, when you don't have it, I know that when I don't have it automated to do that on a regular, I let too much time between calls go. So then they go cold that way, or mm -hmm. I forget them altogether and they don't get the fifth, the sixth, the seventh or the eighth call. Cause sometimes it just takes that long. Right. And then what Absolutely. about the people who take six months in their sales cycle to really be ready for you? That automation allows you to just go, okay, I don't have to think about this for six months. And so I can totally uh, resonate with your that stress level of trying to remember everything, trying to keep things manually together and going from there. So so say now, you know, in this short seven minutes, Ruben has created a bunch of believers at a naysayers, a CRM. Now you have to convince them that there's actually something out there they can use that doesn't make them a full-time sales executive in their own business. So what, how, how do people pick a CRM for one? And what is the best way to get started with a CRM? Well, I think those two questions kind of go together. And of course, okay. I'm biased, right? I never set out to create a CRM. And in fact, as I started building tools that were designed to plug into CRMs and my customers started telling me, hey, Ruben, I love Memorin, but can you just make it replace Salesforce and Zoho and HubSpot and my spreadsheet and my sticky notes and all that? And like, just make it do that CRM stuff too, right? Like, you know, no big deal. And I would say the world does not need another CRM and it would be crazy for me of all people to create one. And so after a while, I was like, I just can't find the one that works for me. Like they're all driving me nuts. And it, it took me a while to realize it's because they are built for the VP of sales to track the activities of their sales team. So if you have a sales team, you should get one of those traditional CRMs because they're awesome. Like they do so much cool stuff. Are but there ones that I you would suggest? Well, for, it, for it people depends. with teams? It depends on the size of your sales team. So, okay. and, and there's a ton of them out there. And okay. so, so I, I can't name, name them all, but if you've got a really big sales team, Salesforce, right? Nobody okay. gets fired for buying Salesforce. Mm -hmm. So you got a mid-sized team, HubSpot. You got okay. a relatively small team. Pipe Drive is probably the most notable option, but that's Beautiful. just scratching the surface. There's sure. dozens of them. Gotcha. And, and but, there's also- But for the solopreneur, solutions. you were saying? Right. And so, and then it also depends on what are you doing solopreneur wise? Like some people just want to sell online courses or kind of add to cart type things. You need an email marketing type solution. 
where where my stuff fits is that solo person who is selling customized solutions where you need to have a conversation with a prospect, perhaps several conversations to devise a custom proposal. In fact, mm -hmm. the proposal automation was what came first. Right. So for these people, Mimarin might be a good fit, but it all depends on, the, it's kind of like what camera is the best camera. It's the one with you when you need to take a picture, the one that you're going to have in your pocket ready to go each time. So- right. You know, for me, that's Mimarin. For my customers, it's Mimarin. For other people, it may be something else. The key is, like, you, you don't get credit for having the gym membership or the CRM subscription. You get credit for getting in there and working out every day. And <laughs> if you do it right, here's the crazy part. Because if I, you know, my past self could have heard me saying this when I was like, oh, God, the sales, the CRM, I'm going to enter this data. This sucks. Oh, God, oh, it was the worst thing ever. If you're doing it right, it should actually be a lot of fun. Because you're not in sales mode, your CRM should be working for you, mm -hmm. not against you. Mm -hmm. And you get to just have cool conversations with cool people about the stuff that you're really passionate about that they care a lot about too. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of the, the benefit that, that you don't see right away. But when you don't have the tool or you're not using the tool right, you don't have your positioning, et cetera, you don't have your website generating leads, as, as you point out, mm -hmm. then you start getting desperate. Because you're like, oh, crap, I got to close this person, even if they're not really the right fit for me. And they seem kind of, uh, Amen. I got to I got to go land this deal. And then you're fighting them instead of I've got lots of awesome people that I can talk to about the stuff that I'm an expert in that they care about. And there's no pressure. If someone needs to spend six months on other priorities and they want to come back in six months, that's great. Somebody else takes five follow-up calls. No problem. I enjoy talking to them. This other person that I don't like talking to, I'm just going to say, I don't want to talk to them anymore. And there's no pressure on it. So right. it changes the whole psychological dynamic of quote unquote sales. I like to think of it as I still hate selling. Mm -hmm. All right. Bob Berg said, Ruben, you don't hate selling. You hate what you mistakenly think selling is. Okay. But for me, it's just shorter mentally to say, I hate selling. I like helping people. Right. So let's not sell anything. Let's help. And it kind of goes hand in glove with your rule of 26. Let's be real clear about who we help and how. So mm -hmm. the right people will gravitate to us. And the, the people who aren't a good fit are going to go somewhere else, which mm -hmm. is exactly what we want. And so then we just have a good time dealing with the stuff we love. Exactly. What more can you ask for? I, 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 I they're nothing really. I mean, I, I look at it as a service provider we are usually getting into a business that we're passionate about, right? The service that we are providing is something that we're one really good at and very passionate about the outcomes, right? So for me, I've been in marketing for 30 years. I did it for big corporations. I hated that. But when I started working with small businesses and medium-sized companies and where I'm dealing with the owner and that's closely mm -hmm. held companies, man, that was exciting because you get to see the person get the results, you get to see the person enjoy those results. And every one of us that has a service gets that, right? That's why we do it. And I find that the service providers are in it for the money are the ones that end up with the people that you and me don't want to, like you were talking about, don't want to do business with. We we just say no to them because we're passionate enough to, to and, and respectful enough of ourselves and the people we're serving to say no to bad business because not all business is good business, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and let those people who are worried just about the money and be miserable with those people, or maybe they're better fits. That's fine. Right. Like getting that in there. And I, I always tell people like your target market, only 5% at max are in the buying mode at any one time. Right. So if you're in a space that has a hundred possible clients that you can serve right now that are not working with you, only five of them are going to be ready to talk to you, let alone buy from you, okay? And then out of those, hopefully you can find one that month to do, right? And then that cycle goes. So what I'm hearing you say is that the CRM basically glues all of that together with a little bit of automation, a lot of stress relieving, which is awesome. I've seen that since I started using a CRM. I love the numbers you get out of it because you can gamify it. Right. And, and so I look at what's my close rate. Well, and if my close rate is low, I can literally go in and say, okay, who am I talking to? Am I talking to the right people? And, or am I saying no to more people than are saying no to me? 
Mm -hmm. And once we, we understand that, then we can start looking at our marketing and going, okay, are we feeding ourselves the right leads? Because if we're not, we got to change our marketing, right? right? It's not the CRM's fault. It's the marketing's fault, right? But if our marketing's working, we're attracting the right people, but we keep getting no. Now we know because the numbers tell us. So I think that's like the last thing that I would say um, is that the gamification and the, just the pure data that is put in front of you in a good CRM allows you to make better choices on how you sell and who you sell it to. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. And I think you and I have gone through sort of similar arcs of serving big corporate clients and then realizing that, that we really love serving small business owners. How do we do that in a way? Because you've got, you have to keep track of more volume. Yeah. And then you have a smaller number of clients, right? There was a time when I might work on two projects a year and then I, I, I still should have been using a CRM better, but it didn't matter as much. Right Now I got lots of people to keep track of. Mm -hmm. And to your point, they're not always ready to buy, but man, when if you do a good job of nurturing those relationships, they will ping you and say, Ruben, you've done such a great job of following up. Now I'm ready. That's yes. great, right? Yes. And it happens and it, all the time. If you do it, if you follow up without being pushy. Right, right. Just like- if it has a CM, an SMS, like a lot of people just like the texting, like it's very personable, right? And that's stuff that you as the uh, the business owner don't always have to have. You can have some canned responses in getting the conversation going that you can give to your executive assistant to follow up on those initial stuff. And then when the conversation starts getting heated, you're like, oh, okay, now we have somebody who's actually looking to sit down with me. All right, my EA could probably get them all the way up to an appointment without ever selling them a thing. Right. Because they're going to self-identify as I want more information. Great. Boom. So it doesn't always have to be you. And I think that e even as a solopreneur or a small business, we can utilize the resources around us to even shortcut some of the nitnoid stuff that does have to happen when you're dealing with customer relation management. The last thing I want to talk, I want to pick your brain on is using the CRM after you have the sale. Mm-hmm. What would you tell the audience the importance of CRM after they are a client? Well, in theory, customer relationship management deals with customers, right? So for, for big firms, it's sales and service and support. For, for us solo consultants, that all kind of all blends together. But there are a couple of pieces. One, if you've got the proposal automated in there, that's going to take them right over the one yard line into the end zone. And then it's kind of a nice place to see here's all the stuff we agreed to do together. And mm -hmm. knowing as you get towards the end of the project that the client's checking up on that because they want to make sure that everything's done, right? We want to make sure everything's done so everything's happy. That's great. The other thing that I would say is I made the mistake when I started out consulting. I didn't want to be one of those icky consultants who just milk clients and blah, 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 blah. Right. But I, was, I swung the pendulum so far in the other direction that I didn't keep helping people who wanted my help. And the CRM should remind us that we need to keep talking to these folks, right? There's a lot we can do with email and SMS and social media and all these other great technologies, but these are not, if there's one thing I want people to walk away with, these are not replacements for conversation. They are enablers of conversations, but the conversations is where the magic happened. And I'm a techie introvert. It took me years to get this, but if there's one thing you, you leave this podcast with, have more conversations. The CRM should basically be a way of keeping track of a bunch of paperwork, if you will, so that you can spend your time talking to people, clients, prospects, partners. P clients often become great referral partners, especially if you nurture the relationship going forward. So by all means, keep track of that. Learn uh, what, what they actually bought from you, right? That case study, that language can then feed back into your website and your lead magnets. So the virtuous cycle continues. Mic drop. Go into the show notes. Check out Ruben Schwartz and the Mim... I said it wrong. How do you say it again? Mimarin. 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 That's all we got. Okay. I'll probably clean that up a little bit later. But yes, awesome. I'm trying to get these like mic drop moments where I don't say anything at the end. We don't say goodbye. We don't say anything. It's just like, boom. okay. And it's like, because it does, it wash it. It keeps that last thought in the front of their head. 